I've lost my mind. I did a long time ago. Uh, Hi, male guy. He's so nice. Oh, that's nice. Now he's doing the other side of the street. He's so nice. My male guys, every time he sees me walking the dogs, he's like, seriously, you get so many books. I'm like, "Uh uh-huh. And he's like, I've never, I've never delivered so many books to one house in my entire career. That's what my male guy said. He said, uh, so, uh, are you a writer or something? Because (laughs) (laughs) I was like, no, I just like to read. He was like, you like to read a lot. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to our obsession, sir. Welcome. It's like, do you listen to podcasts? No. (laughs) All right. Your recommendation, because every book I've ever okay. read will fall out the back of my head as soon as you ask me for one. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was too funny. He oh, one, one day we were in the garage and 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 Larry was putting boxes in the recycling thing. As the mailman was dropping off more boxes, he's like, "Man, I can't get here fast enough." As soon as I give y'all some, you're putting some of the. He's like, "This is a lot going on here." <laughs> I have kept a box of boxes that, like, I slowly take boxes out, but I keep them just in case I have to mail things. Yeah. This is what I've started doing. But it's like, I just have a small area. I have one large box that just has a small, like, all kinds of different size boxes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah, because last time I went on a hunt trying to find the box for all the books Mm -hmm. that I sent you. And I was like, oh, I I got to get smarter at this. So, like, I I send clothes in to thread up to, you know, get rid of them or whatever. right. And they stopped sending the pouches. So now I've been saving boxes because I want, they just do the thing. I don't know if they're out of mailers or what. Right. But the last time I signed up for a thing, they didn't, they just said, here's the, you know, print this out and stick it on any container. Yeah. And I'm like, so now I'm trying to find the right box because I want to go through all of my jeans because I don't actually need 30 pairs of jeans. Right. Many of which I don't actually fit in. Thank you, COVID. And... So yeah, there's but that. like, what do you put all these jeans in? So I, I think I finally have the right size box, which means I can finally go through and, you know, go through all my clothes. I love that. I love that. Well, I, I we're not that not sponsored or anything, but oh, okay. I really love that. And there's another one that I need to send the package back for, and it's for days. And they just they literally just recycle clothing. They don't resell. They recycle clothing. So I think you give them there's different size packages. Mm-hmm. And it's like five, ten, and maybe like fifteen or twenty dollars for each size. And they send you a mailer and then you send it back. And I think you get like a discount. They also make clothes from recycled clothing. So you can then get like a discount, I guess, and then you can oh, that's buy cool. stuff from them. But it's kind of nice because, like, I had all these random ass t shirts that I'm like, nobody is going to buy these. Like, sending them to Goodwill, they're just going to end up getting thrown out. You know what right. I mean? So, like, I'm just, I just kind of got rid of all the random shit, the stuff that, like, really nobody's ever going to truly want. Right. And so that, like, it can be recycled. So, that's pretty, I have to complete cool, the loop though. on that. Yeah, it is cool, right? So, I think it's really cool that there are those things out there. Nothing to do with books, but, you know, I have a lot of shit. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> and, I don't like to just throw things out. I'd rather repurpose it. Like, yeah. You know, I, so. I tend to donate to the Lupus Foundation when I have mm-hmm. clothes that I'm not ever going to wear again. So yeah. 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 So donate your shit, folks. Donate your stuff. Anyway, this is a fun episode because it is. we're having two conversations. So we, we are, are providing you all with some recommendations for our hashtag 12 women, 12 countries, year long reading challenge. And then we're going to have a conversation about book talk and how it's apparently driving book sales. Mm-hmm. I am astounded. So uh, let's start off with what we are currently reading or what we just finished reading. Um, I guess I'll go first because you went first the last time. That, so ma'am. I finished reading on January 31st. It's my last book of the month, Mediocre by. Mm-hmm. Jome Olu. I always say her name wrong and I apologize so much because I'm an awful human and I need to get better at people's names. But so this is the same lady who wrote So You Want to Talk About Race. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal. Naomi sent me this beautiful art because she also had a finished copy. So thank Mm -hmm. you very much. It was the 
book community uh, January book pick also. So there will be a live discussion that has probably already occurred on this um, as of like, you know, when this gets published. But this was phenomenal. Mm. And I had been recommended this by the Pundlet Pam over on Instagram. I obviously like have seen it around a bunch. And then I guess when Jess's book club decided to pick it, it was like, just freaking read the book already, right? Like, just read it. How yep. many more signs do you need? So I I did. I listened to it. And I need to go back through and mark up this copy because it is it is just so good. And I what I think I like the most about her writing on race and gender is that particularly about race is that she doesn't just talk about the black experience. She ties in the all the ways in which America is so white centric mm. and all the things that we have done mm -hmm. and not just letting some thing kind of slide because it's not her narrative like she calls it out she might not speak to it as much because you know she's not you know mexican but right um she will talk about you know mexicans being driven out of the u.s um at a certain period of time and on some of the atrocities you know, like she talks about these things so they're not forgotten and they get at least a moment in time so that you know if you didn't know already that these things did occur um because there are, there's a lot of whitewashing. Yes. Shocker. There's a lot of whitewashing. It's so it's happening right now. It is. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I find, I, I find her writing just phenomenal. So this particular book is the dangerous legacy of white male America. So I'm sorry if you're a mediocre white man, but you, um, are probably not our main demographic, and you are, um, you're gonna get your ass handed to you a bit in this. But there were some really interesting things that she talked about in here. I think the most Interesting stuff for me was when she was talking about women in the workplace and it particularly like women CEOs and um, minority CEOs. And when they get put in places of power, mm -hmm. they're getting put in when predominantly when com companies are struggling yes. or are, are they, there's, there's, there's something brewing. So they become the scapegoat. And it's, I don't think like, you know, sometimes like, you notice something, but you don't notice something and you just need someone to go, did you see that? And you're like, oh yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I, you know, it's just, I find like, I've always found with being a woman in the workplace, very strange. Um, especially, you know, my former life in finance and it's, it's like this really hard line that you have to toe. Like you can't be hard because then you're a bitch and you can't be soft because then you're like weak. Yeah. You can't, need anything because then you're just not a good enough worker like yeah. god forbid you have to go home and take care of a child it's like oh look how unreliable she is meanwhile on halloween if it falls during a work week every dude in the office is gone because it's like the one day that he goes home and has to do something with the family right and everybody's like good job yes. way to go you know yeah you're such a great dad yeah. so that chapter like that whole chapter i was like fuming yeah. <laughs> like listening to it because it's it hits so close to home but there's there's so much she talks about like um the west and uh eminent sort of domain and how the west was won and like that whole narrative mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. like the american cowboy and and all kinds of stuff and it's just it's so good the amount that she can cram into what is effectively a very small book yeah. is amazing to me um, I'm, gonna I'm gonna try yeah. to get to it this month i want yes. to read it uh in january and we were gonna read it together to but it. yeah but yeah. I'm hoping I can this month. Yeah. Oh, and the discussion of college and education and um, the educational divides that are that are just like, okay, so fine, we don't have segregation anymore, but you know what you did? You you created this public education system that is funded by taxpayer dollars, and then you segregate people within where they live, and now all of a sudden you you've you just you just cre keep you you've you created segregation in a different way. You exactly. find a way around it every time you every time. you know every time. So I it's much more eloquent eloquently put <laughs> by her than by me, but um I loved it. Read it, it's great. And yeah, yeah that it'll that make you book, angry and better informed. <laughs> that book definitely has been getting um so many wonderful reviews and well done for her. 
well done for her. There yeah, are, I'm going to get to it this month oh, for sure. One of, and the one thing that I didn't realize is how much hate she has gotten to the point of having to leave her home for periods of time because people have doxxed her. What? And like when you say it and when I hear it, my first response is like, that's crazy. That's insane. And then my second thought after a pause is actually that makes complete sense because there are horrible, horrible people in this world who wow. are so intimidated by these hard truths. Mm -hmm. that this is their response. And it's it's just absolutely appalling. It's absolutely appalling. I didn't know that was happening to her. Mm -hmm. What a it's shame. It's really sad. What it's a really shame. sad. Yeah. Speaking the truth. Sorry. So we'll get lighter, I hope. <laughs> Maybe. Yes, we're going to get lighter with what I just finished reading. Okay, great. Is it Jackie Collins? No. I just finished. <laughs> so I finally, finally, finally read Walter Mosley. So last oh, okay. year I acquired maybe like nine or ten of his books. I was really interested mm -hmm. in reading him and I went on a mission last year to get a lot of his stuff. And so I read just yesterday, which was February the 1st, I read Devil in a Blue Dress and the second book in the series called A Red Death. Ooh, Devil in a Blue Dress, I feel like is so well loved like it's such a classic right but i haven't read it though so this is the easy i think it's called the easy rollins series easy rollins is a war veteran um and he's not an official detective he just kind of sort of does like detective type slash cleanup type work those are people. my favorite kind of people you know? whether it's like the amateur sleuth and you're yeah. like yes yeah, but he, listen, this guy is so fucking cool. <laughs> He's so cool. He's so laid back. I just, I love Easy Rollins. I was, I was like, you know what? You are a cool dude in every aspect of the word. And he seems to have a really good heart, but also can be very shady at times. You know what I mean? He's one of those characters that kind of like walks the line. But I had a really good time reading these books and they are very short and they read really quickly. And all of these crazy characters in these stories were just fantastic. And I, I'm into this series. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm, I think I have. Good. I have the other two books. I'm not sure if it's a four book series or if it's longer, but I have the next two books. And I, I was about to ask you how many well. are in it. I'm going to look to get really there quickly, eventually. I'm going to read the next two probably like next week. And then I have another series of his and then I have a standalone of his. But man, I had a good time with these books. Easy Rollins. He's, he's a lover. He's a fighter. <laughs> He's all of those things. So I'm looking on. Oh, oh no, I was wrong. Okay. Easy Rollins is a 15 book series. Holy shit. And I have four of the books. Ah, okay. So I have the, the next one I'll be reading is book three, which is White Butterfly. And then the fourth one is Black Betty. So I have those two. So I have to track down the others. You will. Yeah. I just placed an A border, by the way. What? <laughs> So again, this is one of the fun things about reading backlist authors, right? You you read a backlist author, you love the book, it's a series, and then there's so many that you have left to read. Mm -hmm. Or if it's not a series, they just have a really extensive backlist. He's got plenty of stuff. He has like three or four series. And then standalones on top of that. I love so it. So I can basically be in Walter Mosley world for a couple years. Good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Love it. We're here for it. So here for it. All right. So you want to talk about 12 women, 12 countries? 12 women, 12 countries. This is our year-long challenge, folks. We're reading 12 books by 12 women from around the world. Um, we are focusing on translated works. You interpret it how you want to. But we're trying to, you know, expand our reading horizons and just get out of the Western world a bit with our with our reading experiences. And so, mm -hmm. again, all year long, 
we think 12 books is reasonable. It's attainable. Not too much mm-hmm. pressure. You know what I mean? No. And no. I think that we're off to a good start. So we have a few recommendations for people. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're stuck. Maybe you just want to hear what we have to say about things that you should read. But we're going to do a little bit of that today. And follow along with the hashtag 12 Women 12 Countries on Instagram, on Twitter. You can also join our Discord. All those links and everything is on our website at TBR Lowdown. Mm-hmm. Dot com. If you go to our Instagram and you click on the highlight that is titled 12W12C, there's um, even a story template for you to mm-hmm. track your reading. So get involved. Get in on this year-long challenge. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, you're going to find some really fun and interesting stories, I think. I think and, so, too. Um, and I, I know that I have done one post, and there's a lot of books in here that are going to be repeated from my Instagram that are books that I've been collecting since we mm-hmm. decided to do this little yes. challenge for um, recommendations and for me to read. Yes. And I, there will probably be more posts like that, for at least on my cha- my channel, on my um, Instagram and on TBR Lowdown and Naomi's. So just make sure you're following us because yes. even after the show, that if you follow along throughout the year, we will be giving you more and more recommendations. Because we are loving this whole journey of just – Translated works. So, so fun. Yeah. Actually, both the books I bought off Babe, Babe, off Babe, I bought them off Jesus. Um, <laughs> <laughs> off Abe just now were translated from Japanese. So, none of them were by women, but that's irregardless. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a lot to read out there. There is. So. There is. So, do you want to go first, my friend? Sure. So, I recently picked up, recently, mainly, I think this was in November, December. Uh, I picked up the book called Night. It's a very popular book. It was the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize. It's Night by Ellie Weissel. Mm-hmm. And you know what? That's a man. Carry on. Let's go with. <laughs> you know what, folks? This is what happened. Forget you. You're a man. <laughs> Forget you. So let's go with. Uh, this is a book called High as the Waters Rise by Anja Campman. I feel like that's right. And this is translated from, I believe, German. Yes. Translated from the German. Woo. And I'll just read a little bit on the inside. Uh, this is it's a debut novel. It says, One night aboard an oil drilling platform in the Atlantic, Walclaw returns to his cabin to find that his bunkmate and closest friend, Matyas, that's probably wrong, has gone missing. A search of the rig confirms his fear. Matt Yoss has vanished. Grief stricken, he embarks on an epic emotional and physical journey that takes him to Morocco, Budapest, and Matt Yoss' hometown in Hungary, to Malta, Italy, and finally to the mining town of his childhood in Germany. And that is High as the Waters Rise by Anja Kampmann, translated from the German by Anne Poston. Interesting. Interesting. Um, I recently just like literally finally it arrived. It, um, I ordered it a little while ago and it finally arrived from book depository. Uh, it is the dangers of smoking in bed by Marina Enriquez and it's translated from Spanish. She is a very famous Argentine author and it is, I believe a collection of short stories and it, it is sounds weird and wonderful and I'm here for it. Mm. Also the cover is just so stunning. Yes. Um, it says, uh, a chill, uh, sorry. A city thrums with murderous intentions, family betrayals, and morbid desires in this masterpiece masterpiece of gothic, contemporary, contemporary gothic, I don't know, can't speak. Welcome to Buenos Aires, a place of nightmares and twisted imaginings, where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bones carry terrible curses. This brilliant, unsettling tales of revenge, sorry, these brilliant, unsettling tales of revenge, witchcraft, fetishes, disappearances, and urban madness spill over with women and girls with whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge. Mm. It just sounds so, like, moody, and I'm, well, like, here for it. You know who else has talked about that book? Books and Bow? You know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She has an obsession with Books and Bow. Just a little one. <laughs> a little obsessed with them. Just a little yeah. one. That so I'm excited good. for this. And it's nice and short. I yeah. will say, okay, so if 12 books somehow intimidates you, 
a lot of the translated works, not all of them, are very short, is what I've realized. There are a lot of very short translated works yes. that have a lot of good reviews that um, are well loved. That's true. That you can read that will maybe make it less intimidating. Like you don't have to read like twelve behemoths. I mean, right. if you want to, go ahead. But like you don't have to. So exactly. That's my little right. That's my little spiel. And remember, they're just stories. <laughs> They're just Look stories. Her. If you're on the video, you need to see her little face. Yeah, they're it. just stories. They're just stories. Yeah. So my next recommendation is Aquarium, a novel by Yara Shahori. And it's translated from Hebrew. And hmm. I don't think I have anything from Hebrew. A debut novel following two sisters, both deaf and raised in cult-like seclusion by deaf parents and the shattering consequences that unfold when that isolation comes to an end. Oh, that sounds fun. Doesn't it though? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I guess I'll go here with Fixed Ideas by Elaine Lund something that has a J after it because I'm um, I believe she's Norwegian. Is she Norwegian? I believe she's Norwegian. I could be wrong. I'm awful. Norsk books. Yeah, I think she's Norwegian. So this is it's a story of Aspen and Emily, uh, he is a literary critic in a critical in a cultural weekly. She is a young, promising journalist at the same paper. After a party, they end up sleeping together. Fixed Ideas is a contemporary account of desire, gender, and longing for love about fundamental loneliness and the constant gnawing self-consciousness that threatens our ability to open our eyes for other people. Mm. It just sounds moody. Yes, it does. And I like moody. Yeah. I'm hoping f for like sort of that like Sally Rooney moody vibe. Yeah, I love that cover too. And I know somewhere someone's going to be annoyed that like I'm like comparing something to Sally Rooney because everyone gets their panties in a twist about that. But why? It's just like a vibe and that's the vibe I'm kind of hoping for. <laughs> I'm here for it. My next recommendation is a particular author that I talked about during uh, January in Japan. And that is Sayaka Murata. She mm -hmm. has two books that I read last month, Convenience Store Woman and Earthlings. She is amazing. These books are very short. They read really quickly. They are weird and strange and quirky, and you need them in your life. Yes, Translated you from the did. Japanese. Translated from the Japanese. I'm going to go and give you what is probably the only fantasy. It's like historical fantasy. Mm -hmm. Um I believe it's historical fantasy. It might just be historical. Let's see if it gives me a breakdown. I thought it had a fantasy element. But this is The Widow Queen by Elisabetta Czerzynska. I got him bad at Polish. Um, but it is the story of... This is the epic family and love... This is in... <laughs> my mouth no worky. In this epic saga of family, love, and war, we meet a battle-tested exile returning to claim her his rightful throne, a bloodthirsty prince hungering for his father's crown, an honorable Viking leader thrust into the politics of nobility, and the young woman with the power to raise and ruin the fates of them all. Uh, the blood one, they call her, too bold for most. So, like, I feel like it's got fantasy vibes, but, yeah. you know, it's probably more like um, the Forgotten the lost queen oh yes um, mm -hmm. that's what i'm but it's 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 kind of a historical telling of like ancient poland um or polish history so i am i'm here for this it's she's a little chunky mm -hmm. she's beautiful the paperback comes out soon i think if you're more like a paperback person this is a recent translation she has a ton of books apparently really? this is the first one to be translated into english are they all so, a series or they're all standalone books I, I think they're all standalone books she's the author of 14 novels according to the back flap and oh. this is the first one that's that's in english okay so it'll be interesting to see like one if i really enjoy this and two if and when they're going to translate more works from her because right. that i kind of love that like mystery of like when will i get another you said anticipation you know, right yeah yeah yeah. I love that. All right. My next one is Delirium by Laura Restrepo, I think. And this is translated from Spanish. Yes. Translated from the Spanish by Natasha Wimmer. Wimmer. Um, so this says, um, 
An unemployed literature professor who has restored, resorted to selling dog food for a living returns home from a short trip to discover that his wife, Augustina, has gone mad. He doesn't know what has happened during his absence, and in his search for answers, he gradually unearths profound and shadowy secrets about her past. Do you even Ooh. need to know more? Mm. No, but I also love that cover. Right. It's very, it's, it's, this is a very dramatic cover to it's me. It's moody. I like yeah. moody. Very dramatic. So. I'm moody. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll get the other behemoth out of the way, and that is the wonderful Eighth Life, which I'm reading because of Naomi. Yes. And this is, is this translated from German, or is this translated from, I can't tell which one it's translated from, or because she's, what, she's Georgian. Right. And I think it's from German. She writes in both languages. I think that's but from German, I believe. Irregardless, it is translated, it is an epic saga something about hot chocolate i don't know it covers a whole oh, yes. lot of families you know the whole spiel about it it's it's like a it's it's, it's just an epic family drama um with like hints of magical realism is that listen true? i don't yes. know if it sounds but like it, you've got like it's, special it's hot so chocolate. minimal it's it's not overwhelming or overpowering at all and those of you that are watching the video you're looking at this book and you're like listen that's a chunky ass book Absolutely it is. But let me tell you something. You cannot stop reading that book. That story is so interesting. That family and what they're going through, you don't want to stop reading it. I, mean, I was it starts, actually interested the whole way through. It starts, what, at the Russian Revolution and then it goes all the way through to like the early 2000s? It's so correct? good. Like the things that happen are just, oh, I loved it. I loved it so much. I need to get so, a copy for myself. Yes, it's it is on script for audio too, in case anybody would like to listen to it for free. I'm trying to, or not free, but you know, yeah, super. yeah. So I'm trying to. I I really want to try to make sure everybody has access to stuff. Yeah, and yeah. that's going to de deter. That's going to depend on too, like their their individual libraries as well. Yeah, because sometimes my library has stuff that yours doesn't have at all, and vice versa. Yeah, and I mean, even through the New York Public Library, mm -hmm. it's really funny to me how like the New York Public Library, which is like. Oh, Massive. The library. Yeah. Like, how do you not have certain things? Exactly. So it's kind of crazy. We went through this um, last year. I was looking for more, like, Native and Indigenous works. Yeah. And there were all these books that I found um, through searches. And I would go onto the library site and nothing, nothing. And I'm like, how... Maybe this is why people don't read these stories is because they're they're not even getting access to them in their public libraries. If the New York well, Public Library doesn't even have it, how are you supposed to have access to it? And like not right. everybody has the ability to be a fucking hoarder and have a shelf like a wall full of books, right? Not everybody has this and not everybody needs to. Like they should all still have access to books. Yeah. Sometime this year, we're going to be having a conversation. I'm making this political now. <laughs> I mean, no, but, but sometime this year, because we, we've talked about this between the two of us last year, we really want to talk to someone at a library for yes. a few reasons. One, so that we can understand what it is that we can do as patrons to help our, our local libraries, but also, too, mm -hmm. just curious about where are you all getting your information on what books to order for the library? So anyway, just know that at some time in 2022, that conversation is going to happen with somebody from the library. So stay tuned for that. All right. Next up is uh, a book and an author that both Alyssa and I have. And this is Flights by Olga. I'm not going to try her last name because I can't say it. I've tried. I can't say it. But it's on my list, too. Yeah. So I started reading this last week. And I'm just going to tell you all, the writing is absolutely beautiful. And also, mm -hmm. this story, Flights in particular, it's really, it's like a travel memoir of sorts. Um, I, I know this book has a lot of mixed reviews, but I find it very interesting, very adventurous feeling, and very beautiful. So I'm having a good time reading it. I can't wait to finish it. So this is Flights. It's translated from the Polish by Polish. Jenny. Is this by Jenny? I follow her on Twitter Jenny Croft. Now. Yes, translated Jenny by Croft. Jennifer Croft. Follow her on Twitter. She's I, absolutely wonderful as well. I really like these blue, just plain blue I like those versions. Too. I kind of think I'm going to get the books of Jacob. Because you got version. the other, you have the other one in the blue, right? No. So this is gonna be my next oh, one. Oh, that's right. I was gonna kind of do them together. Uh, well, I got this special. 
I got this special edition of it that is uh, that has sighthounds on it because I am a greyhound mama and I had to. So this is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which is kind of like almost, I think it's supposed to be set up almost like a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm only two chapters in because I had to go to bed. And um, I'm when we're done recording everything we have to record today, I'm getting back to this because I finally got Wheel of Time off my, <laughs> yeah. off my list for a little bit. So um, I was blown away we both started different books by her mm -hmm. and we're just gonna call her olga t yeah olga t. let's do that olga t my our friend olga so um we both started different books from her around the same time i was absolutely floored like i've heard that she's good and she's won a nobel prize yeah for literature but i was not prepared for how remarkably good her writing was there's mm -hmm. just this if you read the door by magda zaba which is also another recommendation unless maybe already has it in her so thing good. the narrators have the same kind of feel where they're kind of like grumpy old ladies uh but there's just the the so there's just things that come out of this narrator's mouth that are just such like truths but they're said so flatly and like just dryly and I don't know. I, I just really love it. So like, like the, really it starts with like her neighbor knocking on her door at about another neighbor because he's dead. Right. And they, they like go there and they're like doing stuff with his body. Right. And I'm assuming then they all, the story unfolds with like, why is he dead? But like, that's kind of where they are. Like they're, they're playing with this body. So they have this dead body. And, and this says something about things being inhumane and, or inhuman. She's like, Oh yes. The human body is most definitely inhuman, especially a dead one. And so like, I just start laughing. Like, yeah, it's just so dry and funny in the context. Dressing a dead man was like a form of caress. I doubt he ever experienced such tenderness in life. It's just like, Think about that. Just think about that for a second. Like, yeah. how sad is that existence? If you were that, like, there are these moments that really, they re she really can t say so much without saying that thing. Like, he had a sad life. She he doesn't say that. She, right. This is what she said. And it's just, I don't know. I'm having a geeked out moment. I'm loving it. I'm here for it. She has all about it. so many passages that she just wants to highlight. Like, in flights... You're following this young woman who, you know, she doesn't really have any like big lofty career goals or whatever. She's just kind of traveling around and writing down what she sees. And mm -hmm. when she's talking about her life, let me read this one passage. She says, um, that life is not for me. Clearly, I did not inherit whatever gene it is that makes it so that when you linger in a place, you start to put down roots. I've tried a number of times, but my roots have always been shallow. The littlest breeze could always blow me right over. I don't know how to germinate. I'm simply not in possession of that vegetable capacity. I can't extract nutrition from the ground. I am the anti antius. My energy derives from movement, from the shuttering of buses, the rumble of planes, trains, and ferries rocking. Oh my gosh. That's just so good. That's it. I'll give you one more and then we'll stop. That's what our house, um, that's what our houses are for to protect us from the sky. Otherwise it would pervade the very inside of our bodies where like a little glass ball, um, our soul is sitting. If such thing exists again, phenomenal. The writing is just, and like what I read you was like on page like six. Yeah. Like I, you know, two chapters, in, you know, I've read 32 pages. <laughs> like, she so just, this is, she's, she's got a, a way. She definitely got has a way. way about her. So okay. obviously Alyssa and I, after we finish these two books, we'll be buying the books of Jacob and she's got some other backlist stuff that's been translated. Eventually I'm going to read everything that she's written that's been translated mm -hmm. into English because she is something else. But let me just tell you that books of Jacob is freaking expensive. It's thirty one dollars on Amazon. It was thirty eight dollars on Barnes and Noble. It makes it's like my... thirty some odd dollars on Book Depository, and it's like forty something dollars for the hardcover. Thirty eight at, at Books a Million. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Don't doesn't doesn't Barnes and Noble have that membership that lets you get money off the hardcovers, or mm -hmm. is that okay? Yeah, I just don't want that one. I want the blue one, so I have to go through book Oh, depository. right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is fine, because I have everything else in paperback, so I don't mind getting a paperback. But, like, $31 for I a know, paperback. I know. And it's a nice, chunky book, too. I can't wait to get it and get it Is it made one. of gold? Like, what? It's made of Olga tea. 
Yeah, <laughs> Olga T. You got to pay for the Olga T. Let you me tell you. You got to pay for that. But <laughs> we are both enamored with this woman. Uh, so we recommend yes. adding her to your 12 women, 12 countries list. How many do you have left? I have three. I have one. But I can, oh. I can, I can grab two more. Grab two more. Okay. You go. I'll grab two more. Okay. Uh, I'll do uh, In the Shadow of the Y'all. Y'all. Y-A-L-I. So this is translated, I believe, is this the one that's Turkish? I think this is Turkish. Yeah. So this is translated from Turkish. It is from the 1940s. It's uh, like a Turkish classic. This is raised by her grandmother in one of the famed Yaz, an elegant yet crumbling elegant yet crumbling that line the Bosphorus Celia occupies at a unique space between the old world of the Ottoman empire and the new world of the Republic. She just drifts through 10 years of marriage reserved, even with her husband, never tempted to stray from the safe, safe path of respectability. And then one night intoxicated by a soulful tango, she suddenly is seized with a mad passion for another man whose reckless pursuit of her should offend but it doesn't torn between two men who want to possess her celia attempts to live a life true to herself always keenly aware of the limits placed on her as a woman so this gave me um kate chopin um oh my god what is that book called the awakening vibes where you have this woman who's very repressed and who ends up just like finding her sexuality through like a extramarital affair and then i'm assuming then the, where you're gonna see like the fallout of all of that but mm-hmm. i i just i just love the idea of getting not a new translated work but an old one that's new to being translated and seeing this this pocket of like 1940s turkish literature so excited turkish and it's literature turkish, i so love like, it like i feel like i need turkish, to get like, some never, of that yeah i need to get it we on never, that. like i feel like we see a lot of like like japanese in particular korean and then maybe Chinese. That's mm-hmm. probably like the hierarchy. The hierarchy. That's the wrong word. Like the the that's most weighted. The weighted. Like how who's getting? Most. Yeah. And then you know you know you've got your European translated and a lot of different Spanish translated, but like Turkish, like yeah, I know it exists, but like I just don't think we see it as much. Yeah, I think so, I think that's correct. That one made me excited. That's awesome. So, yeah. What All you right. got? What you got? What you got? All right, I grabbed two more. So I've got uh, at the Wolf's Table by Rosella. Posterino, and this mm-hmm. is translated from the Italian by Leah Genesco. I read this book, I don't know, maybe two years ago. I don't know. But so you're following this young woman. Her parents are no longer here. Her husband is in the front lines fighting in World War II. And mm-hmm. she has been chosen <laughs> to be one of Hitler's testers, taste testers. So basically, she, with a group of women, they have been taken away to be the people that taste Hitler's food before he eats it. Yeah. I'd be terrified. Terrified. Also, if you are that paranoid, you are not a good person. Okay, sorry. Exactly. So, so if the Cheeto starts getting a food taster. Th- th- there you have it. So um, you've got that whole thing going on. You've got a little bit of forbidden love going on with her. It was a really good book. I I, I really enjoyed it. It's pretty short. So, you know, definitely a read it in a day kind of book. But I thought it was really interesting and um, I enjoyed it. So that's At the Wolf's Table by Rosella Posterino. Excellent. So I have two more. I have The Iliac Crest by Christina Rivera Garza. I know this is translated from Spanish. I don't know if... If she is, I, I don't know, I think she teaches, I think she basically lives along the border in California. So I don't know if she's American, but from like Mexico, if uh-huh. she's Mexican and moved to American. Like, I don't know what that whole background is, but she is a professor and she's also, you know, this is translated from Spanish. So this is um, on a dark and stormy night, an unnamed narrator, love a good unnamed narrator, Mm -hmm. is visited by two women, one a former lover and the other a stranger who ruthlessly harasses her who ruthlessly harass him and claim to know his greatest secret. An increasingly desperate attempt to defend himself, he spirals deeper into the haunted past of disappearance and memory. Mm. It just sounds moody. Yes. And I'm here for it. Yeah. And Hayes is just like, what is this book about bones? I was like, shut up, Hazen. It's not about bones. 
I love that. I love that. So literal. Yeah, because she says a note from the author, I have lived between Mexico and the United States for most of my life, countries categorized by the richer gender hierarchy and femicides along post-NAFTA borders. So I'm not really sure, you know, like, where she, and she's definitely, like, Mexican, but, yeah. like, I don't know, you know, but it's irrelevant, she, you know, it's translated. This is, and also, I feel like it's a very interesting experience to live along the border right so like i would love to hear more about her experiences growing up in that very contemptuous um is that the right word Mm -hmm. contentious contentious um like environment yeah Uh, so i I would love i would love to know more about that um because i feel like when you live up here so like i feel i don't know about how you feel living where you are but like living all the way up here in the northeast i feel like everything is is somewhere else like a lot of the problems feel so like somewhere else yeah because i feel like we're almost sheltered up here from a lot of stuff and like yes things happen but they happen i don't know it's just something something about like the feel of like when you get these news stories they're always somewhere else yes and we it's not that we don't have like racial contentions and we don't have issues and we don't have problems and like, but it just feels like the big stories are always somewhere else and it distracts from maybe what's happening here. I'm half and half on that because a lot of times when things are big and there's protests, they happen where I am. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm in Virginia, but I'm like 45 minutes outside but you're of DC, DC yeah. white house, yeah. the capital. So like big things happen here a yeah. lot. I when think people are pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> when I lived in the city, like obviously big things happened in yeah. New York City. But as soon as I moved out, it's like things happen, but they don't happen the same way. There's mm. a different tone, I guess, to experience the experience. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. I just always like actually reading about people's very personal experiences with right. the things that are happening that are commonplace but don't feel as commonplace mm-hmm, mm-hmm. based on where I'm living right now. Yeah. And being, you know, uh, me. Like, yeah. That makes sense. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's a story outside of my story. And I'd right, rather. Exactly. I want to know from, I'd rather know from the people that have. They have experienced it. They it. Exactly. Than hearing the bullshit that gets spewed to us through the news. Right. Exactly. Anyway. Yep. I'm with you on that. I went somewhere. I went somewhere with that. Sorry. I did not expect to go there. No, that is perfectly <laughs> fine. All right. So I've got another one here. Actually, I can't wait to read this one. I'm excited about this. This is called The First Wife, A Tale of Polygamy. And this is by Ooh. Paulina Chizian, translated from the Portuguese by David Brookshaw. So it says, after 20 years of marriage, Rami discovers that her husband has been living a double or rather quintuple life. Tony, a senior police officer in Maputo, has been supporting four other families for many years. Rami remains calm in the face of her husband's duplicity and plots to make an honest man out of him. Okay. So, look, another tiny, cute little book. It's adorable. Right? So cute. So, yeah. The First Wife, A Tale of Polygamy by Paulina Chizian, translated from the Portuguese. Interesting. Mm Mm-hmm. Huh. Trying to think. You know, sometimes I feel like having sister wives would not be a bad idea. Oh, I'm too territorial. I'm entirely I mean, I th- too territorial. But like, think about how much peace you'd have I when they're have not with you. They're not with you. But they're touching my things. See, <laughs> I'm too territorial. They're touching my things. They're probably not cleaning the way I like to clean. They're not cooking they the way have- I like to cook. But you could have your own house. Like oh well yes yeah, you know what I mean that. well, well I don't know how you want to live in your polyamorous relationship but like I would have to ha- we would have we could all be on the same street I don't care but like we don't need to all stare at the same oh, space okay. like if it's somebody if else's in my turn own space where nobody else is touching my stuff I'm good <laughs> I think <laughs> I might just have issues with space and <laughs> I just like to be alone too much. <laughs> The reality is, is I'd probably punch a bitch, but like <laughs> in this fantasy world, it's like, oh, I get a night off. I can, I can just do whatever I want. <laughs> I see where you're going with this. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I see. It's like, who needs a she shed? <laughs> right. I got a whole other house. <laughs> Oh, I, I need I need mental help. Um, so the last book I have is Childhood, Youth, and Dependency by Tove Diddles the Levinson. I can't. I don't. Mm. I've heard of that book. That sounds familiar. Yeah, she. It's 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 a memoir in three parts, and it is um, translated from. Is it Danish? I can't remember. Oh my god, I'm the worst. Denmark, yes, Danish. There we okay. go. Um, so this is following one woman's journey from a troubled girlhood in working class Copenhagen through her struggle to live on her own terms. Uh, this is a searingly honest, utterly immersive portrayal of love, friendship, art, ambition, and the terrible lure of addiction. So, yeah, it just I'm here for it, and I love this this cover. I really like the penguin cover. Yes, I there's, do too. There's another cover where she's got like the girl with like the circles and the, the coming out of her eye. And it's this really abstract art thing. I like that one, but I, I just, I had to have this one. I like it. Yeah. My thing's a little bright, so you can't see everything. So yeah, those are all of our recommendations, right? You don't have any more? Yeah, that's my last one right here. Whoop, whoop. My whoop, last whoop. one. All right. So I was watching a video on his YouTube channel was called Travel Through Stories. I believe. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about his wrap up or whatever. And he came up, he was talking about this one author sounded really interesting. And this on a whim, I just ordered the book and it is the collected fiction of Lena Crone. And, uh, she is, oh, okay. She is one of Finland's most iconic writers. So Whoa. I purchased her collected fiction and it's got, Obviously, several translators because this is her, this is all her stuff. So I've got yeah. her complete novels and novellas in here, as well as her short stories and excerpts from larger works. So this is very That's exciting. Cool. That's cool. What kind of stories are they? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I do want to get, um, do you remember that book I read last year for women in translation by that Finnish lady, Sophie something with the lady with the yes. hair? So, uh, she has a new book out. I want to get that one. I can't remember what it's called, mm. but I definitely want to go there, um, for Finland. And I do want to find some good Icelandic stories. Yeah. I know you've got that murder mystery that you really liked. Oh, my Joe um, Nespo. That it, is he, but he's not Icelandic, is he? Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's Swedish. You had something else. Anyway, but I want to what find some Icelandic have? mysteries. It was it a was lady something. or a man? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, okay. But Who it's knows? fine. I have a few things I want to find. But anyway, there's lots of things. So stay tuned. Keep Make sure you're following us everywhere so you can see more recommendations throughout the year. Hashtag 12 women, 12 countries on Twitter and Instagram. If you should happen to forget what we just said, just go to tbrlodon.com. Everything is there for you. So, yes. And if you have recommendations, feel free to shoot them over to us anywhere you feel like it. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah when you when you buy books for this uh, read, uh, year-long challenge or, you know, as you're reading them, post them on Instagram and Twitter and, and use a hashtag so we can and, all and tag us. see what you have yeah. going on so we can chat about it together and join the Discord. Again, yeah, and we can find your books. The website. So. Yeah. Yeah, bah, bah, bah. so do you want to quickly talk about our book talk discussion yeah book talks real interesting yeah i think this is gonna be a longer episode than we originally had anticipated but let's go for it let's do it let's i hope you guys have snacks grab a coffee grab a tea grab a cold or room temperature cup of water yeah however you like to to, to imbibe yeah but yeah so what did how did this start? Oh, so we both watched Swell Entertainment's recent, uh, what seems like a cult but isn't a cult, um, and she did an episode on Book Talk, and we've talked about Book Talk a lot because it's come up obviously a lot over the last year or so yeah. of the power of Book Talk, um, and there seems to be, and actually on the uh, I was on a call with Tor a little while ago, and they were talking about how book talk is changing um some of the landscape in lands in landscaping in publishing <laughs> because of um 
just the power of book talk to drive sales. And we kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this phenomenon that's happening and that has been happening over the last year, which is book talk. Yeah. I was listening to one of book riots recent episodes and they were talking about book talk. And then I came across that swell entertainment video about book talk. And it's just, it's very interesting to me because like, I really love TikTok mm -hmm. a great deal. If you follow me, you know, every day, I post some of my favorite TikToks for the day. Yeah. This is my thing. But I am not really involved in book talk. And I don't me watch either. a lot of book talk. And I find book talk a little boring. Sam. So it it's hard. And, I, you know, I did a reaction video to that Swell Entertainment because um, I thought it was just a really interesting thing to react to and to discuss. And... You and I have been discussing it. I just really don't, for me, short form video for books doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, aesthetic pictures, sure. Um, long form videos where you talk about books. Yes. Yes. Podcasts. Yes. Blogs. Yes. We're readers. Like, yeah. we want to read about books. Yes. But the short form video for me, does I don't understand it because a lot of it is just people like dancing around and pointing at books and right. I get bored of that. But then there's also the juggernaut of book talk that is pushing a lot of the sales, especially of backlist books. Like it's weird. Like book talk gets fixated on a thing. Like, I don't know what, what's like an older book that I got fixated on. Beverly Hugo. Yes. So like they got fixated on, on the, the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And it's almost like the wave of that has, has died down and like people still read it and like it, but it, there wasn't there, you know, we're sort of over the initial big wave, you know, Taylor Jenkins Reid has come out with other things since then. Right. And it's great for the authors that there's this resurgence in their sales and reinvigoration of their, their books. Um, but it's also weird, I guess, as a consumer of bookish content, because I'm like, yeah, I get that. Like, we did that, like, two years ago. What are you doing? Like, Well, that's kind of what, I don't want to say it's annoying me, but it's kind of like, it's, it's like, well, we already hyped these books up already on Bookstagram. Yeah. Why like, you a, a lot of the, I don't want to say a lot. Let me take that back. Because what, I, here's the other thing I'm noticing. The other thing I'm noticing about these books, books that are hyped up on book talk uh they are books i would not read anyway they are either ya right or they're um mm -hmm. what do you call a colleen hoover book is that contemporary like is that yeah i don't mind colleen hoover i'm not like a coho but like I well, you do, know what i mean like it's that i read verity and i enjoyed it but and i would read more from her right like but i'm not it's she... a lot of ya it's a lot of and maybe it's because a lot of it's being driven by younger book talkers and mm -hmm. maybe the reason why, because I've been thinking about this a lot, like aside from the fact that these are not books that I gravitate to personally, but also I'm an older reader. So you can't just point to a book and dance with it on book talk and <laughs> compel me to buy it or want to read it. I'm an old yeah. fucking lady. I think you know what that I mean? like the romance area of like the smut talk, I feel like that's its own that's its own beast. And I've never and, even seen that. And and it is, uh, I mean, there's so many different writers in the romance space from traditional through to self-pub that, like, I think that TikTok is, it's fine. Like, that, like, stay, like, use that because there's yeah. so many different people that are getting, um, notoriety and recognition and, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and, and that's fine but i also have a little bit of a fear of public of big publishing coming into tiktok and using tiktok to drive sales because i feel like they're kind of going to ruin it like twitter like book twitter especially in the ya space there was this push for like somebody was talking about this a few months ago there was this push for ya authors to have this connection with their audience and that has become sort of a tricky thing to navigate, especially through book Twitter, which is a terrifying place, as we all know. And you can get canceled or get in trouble or get backlash or yeah. have negative experiences by having those relationships. And maybe you don't want to, whereas I 
have those relationships maybe your publisher is making you have a more public persona than just mm-hmm. being an author and whereas i think the the self pub authors that have social media followings they have really cultivated those followings over years and they're 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 true 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 fans that have been following these authors for years and it is a very organic and natural relationship between yeah. them and their 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 fans and I don't know. I just feel like somehow it's going to get tainted by, by corporate, you know, the corporate entity. Um, even if they have the best of intentions, I feel like somehow it's going to go more that like scary book Twitter ro- route than where it is right now, where you have people that are just genuinely fans of people's content. It's like the difference between, yeah. you know, your patrons and maybe somebody else watching your content. Like your patrons are going to be your supporters. Like they're your base. Right. Right. Um, and they're going to support you. And then there's everybody else who maybe won't support you. And I just, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this thought, but it's like somewhere in there, like I'm a little bit hesitant about how corporate America is going to screw up what is happening right now in the booktube space, the book talk space. I mean, I don't, I don't know how they could screw it up. I don't. I feel like they're just gonna go for the cash grab, and then that's it. I mean, in terms of what are you talking about when they acquire authors mm-hmm. on TikTok? Yeah. I mean, well, hell, that's gonna happen regardless. That's true. You know what but I mean? Like, that because the same thing could apply to an author who already has a booktube following, or that's true. You know what I mean? You know what it makes me think of? It thinks it makes me think of like these youtubers who get like book deals that are like stupid books that are ghost written by somebody else or whatever but like ultimately they don't go anywhere like mm-hmm. they just become fluff that stays somewhere and i would hate for an actual writer who writes really well to sort of get eaten up in the monster that can be publishing big publishing I think that that's probably a concern whether TikTok exists or not. That's true. You know, I really do. Like, let's let's not make it like the publishing industry is so like, you know, clean and neat. It's not. You know what I mean? It's 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 messy, and they have their own problems that have nothing to do with TikTok. Uh, but I I do I do find it interesting that because I'm thinking back to when I first joined Bookstagram and how. I didn't see any bookstagram recommends tables at bookstores or I didn't see like on these bookstore websites, a page dedicated to what bookstagram recommends, but we do that for book talk, which I find really fascinating because what's, because I don't know if it ever drove sales like book talk is driving. Maybe, maybe it didn't. Maybe money talks. Maybe it didn't. I don't know. It's, 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 it's awfully strange. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it's inherently a bad thing. It's just very weird. Like, and I really do feel like the book to the book talk. Sorry, there's too many book things. Yeah, with teats. Book the book talk recommendations for me personally aren't ever really that great. If for things I haven't already read that I know how I feel about them, mm-hmm. I don't like them. Well, I've just come to realize that okay. These are not for you. These are yeah. these are for a younger readers or mm-hmm. people who enjoy reading younger works. And yeah. that is not how I read. So when yeah. I go on the bookstores, I bypass the book talk table. I don't care. There's nothing on there for me. And the one or two things that are on there for me, I read them two years ago. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you just have to know when something isn't for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that we are the target audience, though. I mean, I did love Ice Planet Fairy but, I mean. <laughs> but you know what's funny about that? So I know about that series, not from Book Talk. I know about it because Mara from Books Like Woe has been talking about that author for years. Yeah. That's how I know about it. It's just funny because it's like, I mean, I guess, I don't know. It's It's like... It's just weird to me because it's like the younger generation. Oh my God, I sound like an old lady now. The young folk have, it's like they're discovering things that have already been discovered. And like, it's weird. It's just weird to me. So sidebar. And probably it shouldn't be weird because I feel like every generation probably feels like this about the generations behind them. No, it is weird. I'm sorry. It is weird. Old lady moment. And this is a slight little 
it's not a tangent, just going off off the sidebar a little bit, off of books, but same realm. There are these two guys on TikTok who listen to songs that they've never heard of. They listen to songs for the first time. And like the last three videos, it was like they were listening to like Erica Badu's Call Tyrone. I'm like, fuck, am I that old? And like the you other You are one, that old. And, and then the we other are one that like, old. <laughs> the other one they were listening to Missy Elliott's one of her songs for the first time. I'm like, shit, are you guys like 10? It was just so weird. But like, it was one of those moments like, wow, this is really showing my age. So yeah, yeah, I get it. So maybe, maybe we're just old and that's, that's why we don't connect with book talk. Oh, I was like, we're just old. It's, it's totally what it is. That's why I said, sometimes you just gotta know when something is it for you. I am never Mm -hmm. going to get a book recommendation from book talk. Because from no. what I do see, that is not how I roll with my reading. And it's not a good or a bad thing. It's just what it is. Mm-hmm. It's just what it is. But I do, it is interesting how much it's driven sales. And even Scribd said that Book Talk has, you know, dramatically increased their audiobook sales, which I thought was interesting. Because I didn't even think about the audiobook portion. I was just thinking about physical books. But it's even yeah. helped Scribd a great deal with their audiobooks. That's fantastic. I mean, I think all of this is positive. I think the best thing to come out of book talk is that it's making reading cool. Yeah. And because, because, you know, you feel like people don't read anymore. And you hear people say that all the time, like these young people, they don't read anymore. And I'm right. like, yeah, we, we do like, uh, not I, we, like I'm also a young well, person. We're talking about someone who's but, 70, you know, or 80. Yes. Yeah. Right. I am a young person. Right. But like, it's like our mailmen that are like, I can't believe you get so many books. Right. Like, cause everybody's shocked by it, but there are, there's a whole world of people that are reading and yeah. you might not even know it because we can listen to them on our phones. We can read them on our phones. We could read them on our Kindles. We're reading them here, there and everywhere. And it's not, I don't know. We have, it's a different world. It is. It is. And I was thinking about too, like how book talk has taken off so much. And I'm one, I was wondering why the same didn't happen for bookstagram. And maybe it's because, and maybe in some ways book bookstagram feels too produced or overly produced, you know, with the very pretty layouts of the photos and TikTok is just some freestyle and videos. So you got, you know, you got your freestyle versus your overly produced content. And so, I guess people get bored of and tired of the overly produced stuff. It starts to feel very stagnant. It starts to lose its luster with the TikTok. There's always something new and exciting to look at. It's it's, it's motion, it's movement. There is personality over on BookTok. Yeah. And there is, I mean, as much as I love a nicely staged aesthetic flat lay, like they tend to eventually all look the same. Well, yeah, and right? most of the time like, that's intentional. Like, if you're going through your feed, even, like, from creator to creator, like, there's, yeah. like, you can tell different people have different, you know, aesthetics, but there's, yeah. like, a couple main groups, and eventually all those groups, everything in those groups looks the same. Hemi is losing his shit. I'm going to have to take him out soon. But, like, and maybe with book talk, it doesn't feel that way as much because there is a little bit more personality because it is video, and, but, like... I don't know. I mean, sort of, kind of. So when I said that I, I, I don't really, I find book talk a little boring. It's because already for me, everything feels repetitive and redundant. You know what I mean? Like, you know, book talkers, here's a new tag. Show me the last book you read. Like, I think that's boring, but that's me. Yeah. That's me. Yeah. So I want to know what you're thinking about them. Like people don't post really reviews and that's what I, 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 that's what I really want. Like, I want to see, like, what books did you, we talked about this before just by ourselves. Like, what is the stuff that you really like to watch on BookTube? Yeah. And, like, I would watch it on in a short form video if you did it. But, like, a short, funny, or quirky, or just quipped, equipped, quip, like, <laughs> yeah, whatever, a little quip, you know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. of um, a review. Uh, I would love to see, like, a tiny little book haul or, like, maybe a mini vlog, like, take from book shopping with exactly. me. Like, those kinds of things are interesting and right. are basically a condensed version of long form video mm-hmm. that I, I I'm for, but like the dancing and the pointing, um, it's weird. It's weird to me. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I have a hard it. time just with reels. I don't do a lot of reels. Yeah. I, know I, did I get today, the dancing and I the pointing. Tried. I just don't think it's helpful to me. It's not. 
You know what I'm I mean? Like, like, but but again, I'm I an scroll, older I person. It's going to take more than that to compel me to want to read a book. Mm-hmm. So, because I so there was one article that we were we were looking at, and and they were interviewing a very very big book talker. She's a young lady, and she was also saying that she reads a lot of the popular books that are on book talk so that she can stay connected to the community to have something to talk about. She wants to be able to talk about whatever book they're, you know, talking about on book talk. See, that sounds awful to right. me. Like, I want to read whatever the fudge I want. Right. I don't know why I didn't curse. Um, Because I'm doing all the cursing today. It's all you. <laughs> and like, and I'm happy to read the books that are here. Like, I'm looking through just random, like BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed's whatever list that you sent, you know. Mm-hmm. Hi, Hemi. Hemi, I will be downstairs eventually. Um, and I've read a lot of these books. Yeah. Or I've thought about reading a lot of these books. And I don't like a lot of these books. I like some of them. We, they're not they're they're not new or or novel or exciting like eventually it just gets like eventually is book talk going to just run out of steam because people get bored or are they going to keep growing and i don't know i guess it's going to depend like like how how long is the dis- no how long is the rediscovery of backlist mm-hmm. books going to last on book talk? That's the question. Yeah, yeah. Pardon Hemi. He would very much like me to take him out. So that's that's really where we are, you know, with that. And and who knows? I mean, book. T- it's been going strong for what a year and a half now. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fantastic, especially for authors to get. And we are backlist bitches. We are here for the backlist books. Yeah, but it is also weird to me because there's also so many other books that can be discussed like it doesn't have to be the song of achilles over and over and over again or like akotar over and over and over again and there is this element of like are we only reading these books like you said to stay relevant and then what is the value of these recommendations and these videos Mm -hmm. if they're only being made as like an ability to maintain your platform and stay relevant right and it looks like every other like youtuber who is trying to desperately hang on to their following you know like at some point there is a peak um where you no longer have relevancy there was there's a lady who i can't think that i can't think of her name she shows up in my on my recommendations for youtube every so often but she does these deep dives and she did this deep dive on like you know relevancy on youtube and stuff and it was really interesting like looking at different creators and how they struggle at some point to maintain like how do you maintain over a long haul you know being relevant Mm. to your audience Mm -hmm. and like yeah so what we're looking at it with book these book talkers is the very beginnings of that yeah thing right so like how do you hold on to that at what point like you said is is talking about decades old books going to run out of the or no, let me rephrase that the same decades old books right exactly like, like you gotta put new ones out there because like every time i go past one of those book talk tables which granted i don't go to barnes and noble all the time but when i do and i go to different ones they're all the same it's books. the same books yeah it's not like, and I'm talking over like a whole year. I have not seen very much change in right. sub in and out. Which is really people. interesting, right? Because you're talking about how it has boosted all these sales. But like, quite honestly, like the tables aren't even that damn big. No. It's not like it's a table of like 50 books. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, no. like maybe it's 20 books. And even books, these lists and they are don't like change. maybe 10 or 12 books. Exactly. And they're all like from news article to news article. They're like the same books over and over, over again. Over and over again. And there's, I mean, there are like how many books get published every Tuesday? Yeah. Talk about it. For those who don't know, Tuesday is publication day in the industry. So space. So if you, if you compound that out through years, there's tons of books to read. Mm -hmm. But even so so remember when I went to Shakespeare and co that day when I took my mom in for her procedure. So I was standing there listening to these very, probably very like, I don't know. Posh, posh, waspy. Waspy, like 
I don't know, but like artsy waspy mm-hmm. young 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 women. Um definitely like in their probably they were either like very high up in high school or just starting college and like very young and all they're talking about their books and it was very like I don't know. <laughs> I went on to laugh. But every book they were talking about were all the books that we've already talked about a thousand times. They were like, so like my favorite book is like when we were villains and then, oh my God, like the secret history. Like I have like four copies and like, you can't, like, I don't let anybody borrow it. And like, you're like <laughs> oh my gosh. And I'm just sitting here like, <laughs> wow, have like, have you read anything else? Like you're standing in what is a beautiful bookstore yeah. filled with so many, like the thing about Shakespeare and co is it has so many other books in it. Like right. it is filled with like actual literature and like translated works and it's YA section is like this big and like it is it is like our kind of yes. bookshops. And you're standing here having this conversation where like I feel like you're you feel like you read really highbrow because yes. you've read the secret history. <laughs> right. And it's like, sweetheart, there are so many other books for you to read. Like there is nothing wrong with liking the secret history, but like, have you tried have you tried anything else? Like <laughs> I yeah. promise you there's more things that you will love if you try it. You know what it's reminded me of? And we had this conversation in episode 27 when we talked about dark academia and how I was saying that I find it extremely annoying that when you go on these deep dive searches for dark academia book recommendations, you get the same mm-hmm. recommendations over and over again. And I somewhat feel like the book talk recommendations are the same. They're the same books. Yeah, like, great, you recommended Akatar. No fucking shit. Everybody, Sarah J. Mass, she doesn't need you. She doesn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's exactly. It. But then there's the independent authors like the the Olive Blake, who wrote The Atlas Six, mm-hmm. which I think that's phenomenal that she got a traditional book deal with Tor if Tor actually invests in her. Because I do think that that book has the potential to be something really great if she works with a really great author or I'm sorry, editor. And that's and, the question, right? Because they, and, they, and they've never book, gotten right? an answer. They did. And they're, they're re it's coming back out. And then the second book is it's coming out, I think soon. And then I think the second book comes out in a few months. But like, I really hope that somebody is investing in the author and not just, making a quick cash grab because there yeah. is the potential for something great with that story. It is very complex. It is right. very interesting. There is like sort of like quantum physics stuff going on that, I mean, there's a, and there's a lot of characters and it's, it's, it's actually an incredibly ambitious att- like attempt and it needs to be, it needs some help to get, I'm spitting everywhere. So it just needs a little help. Like if you read fantasy and you actually like fantasy and you like sci-fi, you can see where she's trying to go, but you can also see where it's falling short and a good editor can get her there. But that's the question. Is Tor but are they going gonna to edit it? this book before they reprint it? Or are they just going to slap keep their going. tour label on the spine and, and reprint it as is? That's the question. Or, or if they're not going to re-edit it, are they at least going to, from this point forward, invest the time to polish up the things that need polishing so that going forward the series is mm-hmm. is is just, it's better. Like, it, it has the potential to be really great, which is yeah. why I don't like shitting on the Atlas Six, because I think it really does have a lot of potential. Yeah. And yeah. I love that it got a book deal. But so, it needs a good editor. So she wrote that and edited that book herself? Well, I, she or, may have hired an outside editor, oh, but okay. like not, not I'm just, like I'm a, curious. Not like a big wiggy editor or somebody like that. I mean, who knows? A lot of self-pub authors, they hire editors and stuff. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't know who edited it. They could be great. They, I'm sure they did a fine job. But like, you don't know. There's something that comes with the experience of doing something at like a higher level. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? For sure. And doing it over and over and over again. If you put her with an incredibly experienced editor who mm-hmm. has edited in, a, in in books like this in this space for years, yeah. you could generate something really wonderful. Right. 
Especially since this in particular is going to be a series. And it already has a built-in audience. Right. And like that is huge. It's almost it is like huge. this whole book talk thing of, of, of certain people being, certain authors being, you know, picked up by um, publishers. It's just like the music industry. Mm -hmm. When there's an artist, you know, that's already made a big splash on YouTube and they get the record deal because they've already got the built-in audience. Like, it's less work for the record mm -hmm. company <laughs> because they don't have to find the, the the artist already has the audience. It's the same Isn't that how Billie thing. Eilish came to be? Well, that's how Soldier Boy came to be. Like, a whole yeah. shit ton of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, a whole shit ton of people. It's so... It's so like much not leg every... work that the record companies don't have to do when they get someone who already has a massive following. But not every one of those is Billie Eilish. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or Soldier Boy. So right. they're not every single one of those. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I it's gonna be interesting to see how Book Talk continues. Yeah, and whether I'm gonna watch to that space sales. for sure. Yeah. Not by being on Book Talk, but by reading articles about it. <laughs> <laughs> I watch a lot of nurse talk because it's funny to me. That's hilarious. I watch, but I don't have the balls to make nurse talk videos because a lot of them do it at work, and I'm scared I'm gonna get fired. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. Like, yeah, I don't know how they get away with it, but I, I'm glad they do. Mm -hmm. There's actually there's actually a trick that I learned for crushing pills when you have to put them through a peg tube. Mm -hmm. Through this is gonna make no sense to anybody who is a nurse, but that I learned. The roots of TikTok, and I and I held on to this information for a very long time. And the other day, I had to use it, and I was like, "This better work. This better work. This better work." It was genius. I remember I went to like I showed it to Jesus. He's like, "I've never seen this." I showed this to like a nurse of thirty years. Like, I've never seen this. I was like, "TikTok's amazing." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah, but book I, talk, I have very little interest in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, TikTok as a whole, I love. I'm on it every day. I I'm on it so much. I get those stupid ads where they tell me to take a damn break, and I'm like, okay. That oh was my god, rude. I've never gotten that. I get it every day. It's so rude. I haven't been able to really do much of anything because work's been so bad. Yes. Um. Yeah. Yeah, this is this I have is, to limit. It's become a part of my nighttime ritual when I'm going through TikTok and figuring out what I'm going to share from TikTok to my Instagram stories. This is my little nighttime ritual. <laughs> well, I enjoy it. I enjoy them. Sometimes I, I sometimes I go and I find the TikToks you've shared mm -hmm. and send them to Jesus mm -hmm. so he can see them. It makes people happy when they go to my stories and see those. People are always DM me, you know, with all kinds of things from um, the TikToks I share. So I, I enjoy doing that for my community. It's it's a lot of fun. But Yes, I, I think TikTok's great. I love all of the, like, white girl dog ones. <laughs> like, that is 100% me. Like, every, I'm like, it's a fluffy dog. And like, <laughs> it's a dog that will eat your face. Like <laughs> That's like, hilarious. It's cute. Yeah. I, I am... I am that white girl. <laughs> we love it. Well, you know, hey, if you're on Book Talk, let us know what your experience has been like. Um, let us know if you find it exciting and fun or if you find it to be kind of like pressure filled to like keep up with generating all that content to like stay relevant on that platform. Very curious to know what's your experience like on Book Talk and uh, leave us your book talk tag so we can yes. check you out but yes anyway we just kind of wanted to just chat about that for a minute but um yeah join our 12 women 12 countries challenge follow that hashtag on instagram and twitter go to our website tbr lowdown for all things tbr lowdown join the discord links on our website and uh that's gonna do it for us because she's got to walk the dog so Check wait we need to oh. talk about our book recommendations what are you talking oh, about no i almost forgot i'm so i'm so concerned about the damn dog i'm like him he's gotta go out he's gotta pee the dog is probably <laughs> already pissed everywhere okay <laughs> to be honest with you he's probably already pissed everywhere okay well let's go let's go all right let's so back let's it up go. let's back it up let's back it up so i'll go first so i just pulled off the shelves the heiress by molly greeley um this is a it's not a retelling it's a spinoff of Pride and Prejudice, and it talks about, Is and it's from it's the pers yeah. So it's the perspective of um, Anne de Berg. If you've never read Pride and Prejudice or seen it, it's like 
the it's Catherine de Bourgh's like sort of sickly daughter who was supposed to marry Darcy and because they were fa- they were they were like you know they were agreed to be married at birth or whatever right. to each other um and it follows her life and it's like an, an, an idea of like what does Anne de Bourgh's life really look like she doesn't really get a story in she's just kind of a character in the in the book she's like somebody who gets referenced but she's not really like a person but she gets her own story here and I really I really like it it talks about um a lot about a sort of like Munchauser syn- syndrome oh. and her liberation from her kind of abusive mother and uh, there's queerness in here too. Um, it's it's. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was nice for Anne to actually get a story where she gets to have something good happen to her Mm -hmm. as opposed to just being like this sickly person that's like off in the corner sort of neglected and forgotten so i i i thought it was good so i have a lot of pride and prejudice reimagining on my shelves and this is one that i thought was really nice and unique she also wrote one called the clergyman's wife which i think is about charlotte lucas which i have but i haven't read yet so um i will get to that one eventually this is like a little niche of reading that i really like is pride and prejudice spinoffs interesting i I was wondering what that book was about also the cover is absolutely stunning oh it's stunning it's absolutely stunning and thank you to i think william morrow sent this to me like like a year or two ago yeah thank you william morrow all righty well my recommendation is bull mountain by brian panowich and I guess you can consider this Southern literature. Anyway, um, I love this so much. So let me just uh, read a little. Uh, uh. All right. So Clayton Burroughs comes from a long, long line of outlaws. For generations, the Burroughs, the Burroughs clan has made his home, its home on Bull Mountain in North Georgia, running shine, pot, and meth over six state lines, virtually untouched by the rule of law. To distance himself from his family's criminal empire, Clayton took the job of sheriff in a neighboring community to keep what peace he can. But when a federal agent with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms shows up at Clayton's office with a plan to shut down the mountain, his hidden agenda will pit brother against brother, test loyalties, and could lead Clayton down a path of self-destruction. This book, loved it. It's a series. This is book one, and I believe a three-part series. And... What I'm realizing, uh, what I like is I love when there's a story centered around siblings Mm -hmm. who are living on the opposite sides of the law and, 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 and how those life experiences somehow converge Mm -hmm. and things blow up. I I love it. I love it. I thoroughly enjoy those kind of scenarios. And that's what you get on Bull Mountain. This book to me is a little bit dark. It's very gritty. It's very raw. And I'm here for it. I will be getting the second and third book from the library as well to finish the series. But I'm really into it. And I I like what Brian Panna, what she did with Bull Mountain a great deal. Love it. Yes. So. All right. Well, now we're done. Now, now I can done. walk the dog also, and clean up any messes he may have made. Also, my book four of um, Crave just arrived. It's on the doorstep. Oh, just lovely. So you know. Well, also, folks, in addition to our 12 Women, 12 Countries year-long challenge, we have merch. If you're looking at the video, oh, yes. you can see some of our merch. But go to our website. Go to our website, tbrlowdown.com, and you can check out our merch. It will take you to our store. We've got some good things there. We'll be coming out with new things every yeah, I need quarter. To, I have a few things coming in my little brain. So, yeah, so, so check that us. out. Uh, we we are. If you're not watching the video, we have on our read books and don't be an a hole sweatshirt and hoodies. So again, tbrlowdown.com has and all it's, of it's our a- stuff. It's a cropped hoodie for, yes. you know, the young people that like the crop things. And then we have like a regular sweatshirt. Too, Absolutely. So. so check all of that out. TBRLowdown.com. Anyway, that's it. Go Wakemi. Bye. Yes. And then I got to turn more lights on. Bye. Bye.